What up, what up? United Grind Society presents The Turntable, where we discuss everything relevant to hip hop. I'm your host, Haiku, and with me today, we have the panel. So let's get into it. So with me today, we have Hi Jinx from United Grind. Yeah. <laughs> like it. We have Garbs Infinite in the house, place to be. All right. <laughs> your Agua. We have Seeds from E.com. I before E. There we go. There we go. And we also have Speed from Rhyme Royal. Mr. Captain himself. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So uh, on this episode, we're going to have our first bad fan review segment. Okay. And the bad fan is essentially it's a recurring segment that we're going to have on this show where each member refers an album uh, to another member that they haven't heard of or haven't listened to all the way. So I'm, I'm kind of excited uh, about all of that. So before we get into that, though, I uh, want to talk to you about what this episode uh, is is being sponsored by. So this episode is brought to you by the new hot single, M-A-M-N, featuring United Grind's own and turntable panelist, Hi Jinx. Hiya! United Grind proudly presents. Uh, we from affiliated, they either think we slang it, or that we either bang it. But it's just me and my niggas. Said it's just me and my niggas. Hey. United Grind. Griselda. The fire track, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rapping, rapping. Rapping, rapping. Jake's my favorite rapper that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Respect, respect. Did we lose Haku? Oh, he just frozen in time, bro. Yeah, you just I was killing me with that one. I was hurting him with that one. Damn, the, the joint that hot? Was the joint that hot? That it was frozen in time, bro. Man. Take two. He need to pass he that. Back. He, back. he need to pass he that. I ain't even going to edit that out. Gotcha. That's right. <laughs> I cool. What you got I, over I, there? Past that. that. That was impressive. <laughs> Bro, I cool. I cool. That shit had you frozen like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's. Uh, we'll just continue on with the continue on. You have to forgive the technical difficulties. Uh, each panel member, what I want from you all to is give a short explanation on why they referred the record that they did. Uh, you got a minute to do that. Then the panel member is going to proceed with a review. Uh, the panel is going to chime in with their opinions or their questions or what have you. So why don't we get into it? I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. We have some pretty cool picks in here, but I want to start off with the album Speed. Which album were you tasked to listen to? The album I was tasked to listen to was Nonfiction, The Future Is Now. Okay, so I picked that. I picked that. So let me tell you the reason why. I picked that. I absolutely love nonfiction. Uh, that album to me had some great production. You had Premier, uh, you had Pete Rock. I mean, it was just a who's who and Necro, right? Uh, and I am really big fan of Ill Bill as well. So uh, I'm curious to hear hear your, your thoughts on it. All right, so check it out. Um, I listen to The Future Is Now. And before I did, what I did uh, real quick was because I really like I, I I was aware of Ill Bill, but besides him, besides him I, I didn't really have a reference point to um, nonfiction. So I kind of you know checked up check up on the group and see what you know they they rounds on hip hop was and all that kind of stuff to get an idea of how they flow and what they did. So um the track one two three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen or so tracks, a couple skits. Um, like Haiku said, is a crap load of uh, big name production on there. They had a, a number of features on there. Um, I actually never heard any of Necro's production either, so I was uh, surprised. I was pleasantly surprised by his production because I, I remember him uh, on a. Deep, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. deep underground circuit. 
So I didn't expect the kind of production that that he was pulling off. So it, it was it was slick. So let me run through real quick what I thought. First track, Futurama, strong start, super lyrical. I was actually kind of surprised the way they were rapping, cause it was um, it's uh, how would I describe it? It's kind of um, uh, East Coast current. Like their their rhyme schemes, right. and this album was like way back in 02 or something like that. So it was actually kind of surprising the way it was rhyming. That was the other thing about it. The this future album, is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, uh, right, right. So I'm listening I to. I've heard this album before, bro. I'm just trying to. You know yeah, what? I, you know what, Jinx? I seen the cover for this album probably yeah. a few times, and never heard any of the tracks. Heard. Heard. So. And uh, not to bore y'all with everything I, I saw, though, but the standout joints to me is uh, the CIA is trying to kill me, the original first track. I dug that one. It kind of threw me back. Now, that one was a throwback to me because it reminded me of some uh, Mortal My Union stuff that we did back in the day. Um, they got a track on there called If You Got Love. Now, all of us are familiar. We got crew. It's, it's, uh one of our uh, crew, old crews is Spitting Image. And that track remind me like 100% of Spitting Image. Did Pete so that, Rock do that? I think Pete Rock did that track. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, it's Pete. It's right. The big, oh, the big, oh. um, the I'm big slipping. single on that album was the premiere <laughs> joint, which is, there you go. The, Big premiere joint is Rockstar. Um, I dug that one. That's a banger. It makes sense to me why that one was a lead single. Um, just to kind of skip through. I think uh, Black Helicopter was probably my favorite song on the album. Um, no arguments there. Uh, oh, they got another posse joint on there. They got this song called Suicide Bomb. It's got, um, I like the beat, I like the track. track. Um, beat Nuts. I don't know. For some reason, I got a little soft spot for the Beat Nuts, but <laughs> Beat Nuts and um, Al Tariq and a couple other cats on there. That was pretty slick. Um, but overall, I dig the album, I dig the group. I will be checking for some more in them. No, that's um, it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> I'm talking about the group individually. I know that's the only album they got, but I'm, I'm talking about. No, no, I'm saying that's the only thing worth checking, bro. And I oh, love, I love. Oh, you saying that's it? Not that, that that's the only thing. Like that's the only thing that you, you give a shit about. Is what you're saying. Man. You about. They so blew their wide on that album. They they blew now, it. Now this is this is for this is for Haiku right here because like I rated this on a on a on a five scale and I gave it a three and a half and I'm explaining to you why. I thought that's what you give the it to rap, when I thought. I didn't even do that. Damn. The, the rapping, the rapping is like four and a half. The rapping is great. But conceptually, and some of the tracks for me kind of took it down a little bit. It's like, I, I looked at the group and I thought, like, these dudes are serious in what they're trying to pull off here. Like, they're, 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 their mode seems like serious. Not We ain't playing no games. It's like, you know, fat rap patterns and all that serious shit. And then, you know, it's um I think me and Jinx talked about this shit before, but um wrap it up real quick. But me and Jinx talked about this before about how you go into a um listening to a, a rapper, like if you have expectations, you kind of listen to it in that certain way. So I the way they presented themselves, I was like, Okay, these dudes gonna be saying something. something. Then it seemed mostly about word flipping and and, and patterns and and, and and lyrical miracle and i was like all right well i kind of felt like i got a little bit let down because of that like it, nothing against what they did but their presentation told me something that i didn't feel like i got so i gave it a three and a half thanks thanks for that thanks for the rep but if you listen to any of ill bill stuff who's probably the leader of the group it doesn't follow that lane in any way. So I feel like maybe the label for their first album was kind of like, this is what, way. yeah, this Boy, is what oh, that, that, I didn't realize that that was, was it, something else hot like that at the time. Cause you know, back then labels are just run with what's going yeah, on. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. 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 First put that group together. Right. So that group was, that group was kind of pieced together. Oh, I want to oh. say search. 
put Sorry, that yeah. too, but I'm glad you gave it a shot. I'm glad you gave it a shot. I think you're assessing. No, some of going rotation, man. Some of the tracks going rotation. If I'm yeah. being honest, real quick, the future is now. That album was the blueprint for what E Dot was trying to be. When that mm -hmm. album came out, me and Haiku was like, "Yeah, that's it. That's what we've been okay. trying to do for a minute." Who's E Dot? Yeah. Who's E Dot? Am I lying, Haiku? E Dot Com is Siege and I. Am yeah, I lying though? Not everybody Haiku. knows that shit. Like, yo, you right. <laughs> B, let's do this. Who? What album did you recommend? And who would you, uh -huh. who would you recommend it to? Ah, uh, yes. So I recommended Tila, Peace of Mind for uh -huh. MCC. For MCC. You shouldn't take that much pleasure. Why. Before you even get into it, there's a reason why. <laughs> you shouldn't take that much pleasure in recommending it. No, I take a lot of pleasure in it. I know so, you did. I, I know mean, you this, did. This, is, this one to go, this one to go 20 years? Something. Yeah. So we've been having right, well, let me, let me, why, why did you recommend it? Why did I recommend it? All right, so Tila is a Memphis rapper that was on Rap A Lot Records. And, um... It goes back that you know we've been having this debate about wow. rap yeah well swap wow. house there you go swap house both both he was a rapper like too yeah go ahead okay anyway I did my research yeah my man so I'm like embrace the process I gotta listen to this so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like you gotta listen to something that's outside of the lane and I know C don't dig them southern accents. And he ain't listening to that that rap music, so he got he. This is the chance for me to make him listen to this album. <laughs> so you want to hear him? <laughs> there you go. It's on you, sir. All right. All right. So let me let me jump in. It's funny okay. that you said that speed because you're gonna be surprised by what I'm about to say. Um, <laughs> and I'm not saying I like the album. That's not what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> this album um came out in ninety six, ninety seven. Yo, I want to say, quick, say quick, quick. Did this, was this the album with Show Nothing on it? Yes, yes, yeah, that was um, my point right there, man. I used to love that shit. Um, <laughs> album came out in like '96 or '97. If it was '96, it was late '96. So it was early '97, late '96. Um, I'm listening to it. Uh, it's been recommended to me several times, and there was just no way. I was gonna listen to it. It just wasn't. There's there's certain factors. The turntable to do. Yeah, there's certain factors that right. in Siege's mind just completely turned me off off rip. Mm. The cover. Any cover <laughs> that had a no limit looking cover, it wasn't getting listened to. You pen and pixel if, cover. If Rock, yeah, exactly. If Rock Kim came out with a pen and pixel <laughs> cover, I wasn't listening to it. It wasn't gonna happen. So that was the first strike against that was it. The first strike against it. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> I heard the first single. What was the first single? Tired of balling. Yep. Wasn't feeling it. Uh, and so there was no way. I was like, okay, that's what they on, and it, it justified what I thought in my mind. Okay, this is what I think album covers, albums that sound like what these covers sound like. And then I heard the single, and I was like, yep, exactly. That's what I thought. So let me just run down through. Through the list, so it starts off. It's got a little intro. It's it's slow. It's cool. Then we get to twisted. Uh, <clears throat> is that what it's called? Yeah, twisted. It had like a king of rock vibe to it, and that threw me off off uh, a little bit. It had a, a king of rock sample in the back, but they played it, so they have to pay for it. So that was cool. The very first thing I noticed was, dude, uh, Tila has a very big boy influenced flow. Like flow. first as soon as I heard it, I was like, wow, that sounds a lot like Big Boy. Hmm. And Big Boy can rhyme. And I like Big Boy. So I was right. like, okay, I'm surprised. I didn't expect him to be rapping like that. But it sounded very big boy influenced. As I went through the Except album, you can that hear years ago, but what'd you say? Except that I told you that 20 years ago, but and I didn't even try to hear you, bro. You probably told me, <laughs> and it went right through. Um, so as we go along, I realize there's a very I I, I hear a lot of uh, rap a lot and uh, Dungeon Family influenced in this album, which I like both. I loved rap. I loved early rap a lot. 
that's the thing about it. Like I was heavy into rap a lot in the early nineties, late eighties. So I I was deep into was, it. Like when rap rap a lot first rap. started, I was a super fan. Uh, Outcast, Dungeon Family, when they first started, I was a super fan. Um, so the drawback for this album was by the time by the time it came out, it came out, I was done with the subject matter. The subject matter. So players, pimps, I'm balling. I was I was through with that. I had loved it for many years, but by the time yeah. this album came out, I was done with it. So I didn't give it I didn't give it a full chance. Going back and listening to it, there's plenty of songs on here that at that time period I would have loved. I mean, there's a posse cut called, uh, what's it called? Time. No, not time. It's not time. Time actually is the eight, time is the eight track on the album and it has a sample that Joe Button rhymed over. And it was a song that I loved by Joe Button. And so I'm listening to it and I'm like, that instantly caught my attention. I'm like, wow, there's samples that East Coast rappers have used that I love that they're using and and he can rhyme. So there were some songs that I was pleasantly surprised. He can definitely rap. I, I won't say that he couldn't. The only thing that got me was it was just the time of my life. The time of my life, I was done with, done with hearing about players. I was done with hearing about balling. Uh, Cause I had done that. I had I had loved everything Rap a Lot put out. That's probably why I didn't like No Limit when they came out. Cause it felt like, you know, the next evolution the of Rap of, a Lot, yeah. which yeah. is what I was done with. So overall, you know, like Speed said, I, if I had to give it a grade, I give it a three and a half. At the time period when it came out, I probably would have gave it a four, <laughs> because it's right in lane. What he did is what I would have liked at that time period. It's just that, you know, there's certain biases that I had that wouldn't, wouldn't allow me to look past it. Okay. Fair enough. I waited a long time for that. I waited a long time for that. <laughs> That's the thing. People think I never liked that type of stuff. I liked it a lot. It's just I burned myself out on it. I listened to it so much. Understood. So you, I'm the same way on Gangster Rap. Yeah. Did you get into other Suave House stuff? <laughs> no. No, Swab House no. had the same covers. Yeah. This is the first Swab House album I've ever heard. Really? Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, you know what's funny too, see? Because um Mr. Mike raps on that album. I think on yep. like I the posse cut. But, yeah. Yeah. But I've been trying to get C to listen to Mr. Mike too. Mr. Mike can rap too. Yeah, you can. I heard mm -hmm. it. I said, that's the thing. There was Dang. nobody on the album that couldn't rap. They was really <laughs> rapping. It's just that. Like you said, like you said, subject matter or you know, certain time in your life. Yeah, I can feel that. All right, mm -hmm. we're keeping it moving, keeping it moving. Uh, Beach, who did you recommend an album to, and what did you recommend? You say me, yep. I recommended uh, Smashy Trashy to Garbs, uh, for two reasons. The first reason is Garbs, as many may know, is was a long time. Uh, college radio DJ and host, so he's heard everything. So it's really difficult to try to find something that he hasn't heard. So that was first. Of, first of all, once I found he hadn't heard this, I said, "All right, listen to this." Second, we have a personal connection because you know we know the cast that made the album, or at least a good number of the cats that had something to do with the album being made. And I was curious as to see if he felt the way I did. Who made the album? All right. All right. Uh, it's Kamu and Metro from Columbus. There you go. On uh, Def Jux out. Def Jux. S.A. Smash. Uh, um, well, I, you know, I played one of the songs. I think I, I can't remember which record it was. I think it may have been Smash. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the I can't it was. Uh, you know, so I used to play that on the show, but I'd never heard the complete project. So going into this, what I tried to do. Uh, Rest in peace, Kamu, man. First of all, I'm sorry. Oh, Rest in peace, Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. No for sure. No doubt. Um, so what I tried to do when I was went into listening, I was is put myself in the mind state of what I where I would have been because I think that came out. It came out in 2003. 
think that's what it when it did. So I try to put myself back in that time period to what I would be listening to uh, in that in that time frame with you know heavy into college radio stuff, independent underground stuff. Um, you know, I made some notes. You know, there were certain songs that I like. The songs that I like, I really, really, really like. Um, and interestingly enough, some of my favorite tracks on there were produced by Kamuk. Um, you know, and I didn't even realize the realize. heavy of how much of the workload of production that he actually did on the album. Um, like I like um, AA. Um, I like Robot a lot. I liked uh, what's this track called? I think the other one, another one that I liked was produced by Prism. Um, um, you know, you know, rest in peace, Prism. Rest in peace, Prism. Absolutely. Um, as well. Now, first, what I what I'll say is that. Kamu is just such a dope, dope. He was such a great MC. Uh, I would love to see his progression as an artist. Um, you know. Garbs, I feel like you and Kamu came up in the same dojo. Dojo. Yeah, I can. I can see where where you would say that. I can definitely see where you would say that. Um, going into it now, there's some stuff that I wasn't uh, excited about listening to or hearing. You know, on the album, um, you know, I'm in a completely different space, of course, than I was in 2003. So that's why I try to put myself back into that mind. Um, you know, subject matter uh, is a little bit, you know, different from what I would normally listen to. Uh, but I, I think lyrically it was solid. solid. I wasn't the biggest fan of, but the stuff that I really, really like, I, I think is really, really Garbs, did you? So I was gonna say the song I was the the reason I was asking you to listen to it. There's a song called "The Illy," mm -hmm. that's produced by LP, and it doesn't sound like anything LP's ever produced. Mm -hmm. As and it was the first song I heard off that album, and it, I was like, "This is crazy," and I couldn't wait to hear the album. And then nothing else on the album sounded like it, <laughs> so it disappointed mm -hmm. me because the first song I heard was like, "This is crazy." If the album's gonna sound like this, this is a classic. And then nothing else sounded like it. I can I can see that. That was on the list of stuff that I, I I thought was pretty good. You know, it wasn't my favorite record on there. I think actually the the track I did like. Um, I don't know. I think it had uh, a different name to it. Well, let me look at this. It was. Uh, I, yeah, the track I like was the best. I know what you're thinking. Um. I like gangster too, you know. There was some stuff, but I could see where you would say that, like, okay, and it's funny sometimes with uh, with those time periods, the sound will take you back, right? If you yeah. hear a song, you, right. you know, just sometimes the vibe of, yep. of an album, yep. like Speedy was talking about, the vibe of the nonfiction album, like, oh, they rapping, rapping, like, okay, okay, I got it. So with that being said, Garbs, which album did you task uh, one of your people to, to, to listen to? Uh -oh. I, uh, the album that I suggested to Jinx was Above the Law, Uncle Sam's Curse, which is, you know, it's one of my favorite albums. I think that, it, you know, my personal opinion, I think that that is like a classic album. And uh, for, I know some of you guys know but I don't know. I was a very heavy, uh, heavy in the hip hop in general. But you know, I was a big West Coast uh, hip hop fan. You know, '90s West Coast hip hop, as I still am. But you know, this album right here is the includes the the record that would be considered like a Cleveland classic. That was An anthem nonstop. Um, which There's about five of them, Garbs, and that's one of them. Yeah, that's one of them. That's one of them for sure. Um, I, so you know, I, I definitely wanted to uh, wow. throw an alley oop. See what uh, see what he thought. See what he thought. Right. Yeah, right. man. Yeah. Um, you know, like you mentioned, man. Um, you know, with like Black Superman pretty much being like the the lead single off this album. 
you know, it kind of surprised me that I never delved further into above the law. That's what I was thinking. It was such a big part of my life and growing up, you know what I'm saying, like Black Superman. But, you know, I was trying to think. I'm like, why didn't I, like, delve into it? Like, why didn't I go further into it? And I think just where I was, like, aesthetically, I think I'm kind of, like, seized in the way that, like, in certain, area, in certain eras, I kind of moved. You know, I kind of shifted what I was listening to. And I know I was, you know, primarily heavy into East Coast there. Um, yeah. around 94, I believe that's when it came out, right? 94? Yeah. 94. So, yeah. So, yeah, that was, that was their third studio album, apparently. And, um, I didn't really think, uh, I didn't really think I had heard much from them, but then I remembered they had the uh, VSOP joint. Oh, yeah. And I remember that video and I'm like, oh, I do remember these cats. Like before Black Superman, I remember them, but I didn't link them. You know what I'm saying? I didn't link, you know what I'm saying? But I remember I used to really fuck with the VSOP joint heavy too. So that was a surprise. I kind of learned that, you know, during the research. So I could tell you like from the jump, when I listened to it in the crib, I got a completely different vibe than when I rode around with it. It was just, it was two different experiences. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that makes total like, sense. Yeah, like like many of y'all, like many of y'all had already said, like you kind of have to put yourself in the mind frame. And I think once I rode with it, I was a little bit more to the mind frame of it. So it's a riding album for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and um, you know, just off rip, the album starts out real strong, like with the first, like really four tracks, uh, the set free joint, California. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that was a you know, that was a beater. Um Rain B from Rainbow. And what I notice is that for me it kind of starts to dip in the middle of it a little bit. Um until they hit you with the black superman, then it's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm they, sure they did that on like, purpose. Oh, absolutely. They knew that it was the joint. Like it was obvious to me. I think it's even mixed better than the rest of the album. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm like, oh, oh, like they knew what it was. They knew they said, what take, it was. Take some extra time with that one. Yes, they knew it. So there was out whatever without any doubt. Um who produced that? Do we know? I didn't even go into the credits, um, man. I wish I would. I didn't either. Code 187 did uh a lot. 187 did Black they, Superman? They, actually, they are listed as most of the producers on the album. The, all yeah. three of them. The DJ, uh, 187, yeah. and KMG. They're listed they're, as their the Their first prime. album is mostly produced by Dr. Dre. That I did find that out. And so I, they probably been in the studio and yeah. watched it's and learned. So, 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 the, so the G-Funk like, is written all over this shit. Mm-hmm. The G Funk is written all over this album, and it's obvious. Like, like they like I even read somewhere that they said that they kind of like started it, maybe. So I don't know if it was with this album or with the one that Dre worked on or whatever, but that was that was kind of something that I had that I kind of read a little blurb on that. But really, I think where the album kind of loses me is anything that they do that's not really G Funk heavy is kind of I'm lost on it. Like the joints that I did really didn't hit me that well was the uh, everything will be all right, uh, the one time too many, like those kind of lose the G funk flavor to me a little bit, and they to me they were kind of like the weaker of the joints, but everything else that had that vibe to it, it was right there and it put me yeah. back in the mind of, you know what I'm saying, the '90s, mid '90s, and all that good shit, man. So what was your favorite record? On there, Black Superman. Okay. <laughs> Black it's Superman. Be, what out, without a doubt. Other than the one that was me, right? <laughs> Other than Black. What'd you say? You were brilliant. What'd you say? Say it again. The one that was mixed right. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like the the rest of them was mixed bad, but I could. It just it stood out. Even the mix, I'm like, this shit is mixed better than the rest of the fucking mm-hmm. record than the, than the rest of the album. As far as outside of Black Superman, it would probably be California. Oh, I love that record. Yeah, California's for California's hard, still hard to this day. Um you know what record that was sampled from? Yeah. I didn't know we was quizzing and shit. But. I mean, I just throwing it out 
No, no, no. Jigalos, get lonely too. Ah. Remember Keep that? going, okay. guys. Keep going. <laughs> more. More. That's my um, record. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, shit, you know what I'm saying? This, this record, definitely a classic, and I can understand why, you know what I'm saying? All right. All right. Cool, cool. Let's keep it moving. So uh, last All but right. not least, what you gave me some homework. Yep. So, yep. Next uh, up, you I believe that's you. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so one of the albums that I uh, picked for Haiku was this uh, Kings County uh, Jazzo uh, in the Mobilari, which was like a group. I guess the Jazzo was trying to promote, so we kind of did like a cross album with this group of cats that really only one dude rap for the most part. This dude Dibiase. Um, I had got hit to the album during this time where I had um, <laughs> I had uh, actually a pirated radio station in Oberlin, Ohio. And uh, long story short, I pretty much got a bunch of free records from this from pirate in this radio station and this was one of the ones that i gotten um which was the i believe it was the primo joint the love is gone was like a a single that they had and they actually had the b-side which ended up being the lead single uh commercially which was the joint featuring jay-z and i ended up picking up the album because i don't know if y'all know or i don't know if you know, any of y'all even heard the album, but the controversy surrounding the record with featuring Jay-Z is what kind of started the Jazzo and Jay-Z beef. Jay-Z not showing up to the video shoot, some shit like to that effect. But that kind of piqued my interest. Plus, I had got the single. So I went ahead and picked it up. And, you know, I was like, man, this album got some good joints. It kind of dips off, but it got some joints on it. So... Before Haiku jumps in, Jinx, did you ever hear uh, Jazz's first album, Word to Jazz? No, I never heard anything from Jazz before this. Okay, and, cool. That's yeah. all I wanted to know. Mm. That's all I wanted to know. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Kings County, uh, it is it is a collaborative album, even though it is uh, one cat rhyming for the majority of it. Uh, you know, I did... It's the three songs I really, really enjoyed, but I, I give you my overall feeling. Um, I think that it started off really good. I think the first track is 718. It started off nice. Uh, and it's just like, and to me, it was kind of like a, a bed that's been slept in too long where you got the dip in the middle. And then, <laughs> and then toward the end, toward the end, like Nico, it comes back. <laughs> to me, it felt, it felt like that. Uh, it was hard getting through the middle. It was tough getting through the middle because that was... <laughs> <laughs> error of of production was just not my thing anymore. It was like uh, it felt like Casio type stuff, and you know I was like, man, what year did this come out? Like this is it's uh, 2002. I'm like, why are, why were we still doing that? I mean, the, the, it felt like like uh, uh, like Wild Out and all that stuff that, that the Locks were doing back in the day. And then I realized like, oh, all these groups are connected. You know, yeah. and it kind of makes sense. Uh, uh, there's a song that I really like just because of the content. The content was totally different than all the rest of the content on the album. And it's called Heroin and Crack. And they went, they really got there with that song. The rest of the subject matter was mostly chicks, better than you, more chicks, more chicks, right? And flossing. Uh, but then the, the track they did with MOP and Razkaz is called Pledge of Allegiance. Ugh, nasty. That did it for you. I knew that Wee. would do it for you. <laughs> it was like you already know. I was like, oh, I mean, like like Speed said, that goes in the rotation. Like it went. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I listened to it like three times. Like this is ridiculous, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, but so so what? I, let obviously, me say that, your favorite on the joint. Yeah, yo, obviously, okay. obviously. Okay. What I'll say is this: is that the uh, I was trying you to figure out. Deadly? We said what? You ain't fuck with Deadly. No. What? No. It, probably, what? it probably was all right. It didn't stick out of my head. It didn't stick out of my head. I'll be honest. Yeah. What? I'll be honest. I mean, to me, that was like, that cemented jazz old lyrically. Yeah. When this nigga said, love ain't a feeling, love's a behavior. I was like, nigga. 
<laughs> that shit. <laughs> that was, hit you, huh? That hit me. Jeff can rhyme. He can he can rhyme. Period. Flat out. He mm -hmm. can rhyme. The the production for me was distracting. And even at that time, it would have been distracting outside of these tracks I just mentioned. I mean, I'm very much like, I like my samples. I like, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm really sample boy, but at the same time, I can appreciate it. I can appreciate all if it's done right, if it's done well, done to, you know, my liking. But, uh, uh, but then, you know, if I look back at that time period, man, there was that year uh, you had Blueprint 2, uh, Swollen Members, uh, Mr. Liff, uh, uh, the Rations album, uh, you had Nas Godson, and you had 8 Mile. There's, there's no way that, at least there's a good reasons why I totally missed this album when it first What came. year is that? 2002. I would have missed it too, bro. I mean, yeah, honestly, I man, like, if I didn't <laughs> If I didn't pick up on that single and it didn't come to the to the radio station, I probably would have glossed right over it too. But at the same time, I was also, you know, what I'm saying real heavy on Jay. So the fact that he was featured on the album, you know, what sure. I'm saying I was I was already like you know tuned in. But you know, what I'm saying for me, it was more like a I don't know. It was more like a feeling in the era that kind of like put this album in my mind like i really bumped this album heavy for a summer you know what i'm saying like i was really heavy into this album for a summer and even some of the jiggy shit i actually started liking after so long like you know i would skip the middle for the most part like <laughs> i would skip the middle for the most part but then like at certain points riding around with it and the song would play i'll be like this ain't so bad you know what's interesting about the, uh, That's the <laughs> and the reason I co the reason I co-signed it is because I know Haiku likes Jay Z a lot, and Jazz came up. They came up in the same dojo, man. They oh, yeah. they that's the sad. So I was like, at the very least, you are gonna get some rapping because he can rap. Jazz yeah, you can gotta, rap. You got you got listen to Delhi again, man. I'm gonna task you with that, bro. Yeah. That's so if I had to give it a rating, I think, I think with Everything I, I give it a three. I give it a three. A three, maybe three and a half. Yeah. And, you know that. I think that's what the source gave it. Yeah. So Not I mean, surprised. if they ain't pay for it, then I'm sure that that's right. They got right. <laughs> if you, you, pay if you didn't pay, you got a three. three. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, man. So what y'all think, man, about the bad fan, man? Should we keep, should we keep this shit moving? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to try it again. Yeah. I mean, I think it's valuable. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's something different, man. I think um just so you know, saying everybody knows is that we actually do our album picks when we go live, um, primarily on Sundays. Right now we're going live on Sundays, but that's when we do our picks, and then we come back, and then we actually do the the show, the recordings after we listen to them. So. Well, hey, y'all. All right. Like. Hey, if you. Yep. <laughs> share and subscribe. Share. You know what to do. Subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. And, and if y'all have some sleeper albums that you feel like some members of the panel might have missed, hey, be sure to uh, submit those ideas as well. You Good guys idea. know what to do. You know what to yeah, it. yeah. I was thinking, you know what I'm saying? We probably maybe do that on the live or something. You know what I'm saying? Have. The actual chat, you know, saying we we'll submit some albums to us, so maybe we'll work on that. But no doubt, no doubt. Stay safe, y'all. We'll holler at y'all later. Turntables out. Peace. <laughs>